we now move to national interest disputes. Article 278G. It says that when, in his opinion, there exists a labor dispute causing or likely to cause a strike or lockout in an industry indispensable to the national interest, the Secretary of Labor may assume jurisdiction over the dispute and decide it or certify the same to the Commission for compulsory arbitration. What are the powers of the Secretary of Labor in national interest disputes? Well, first, the Secretary of Labor can assume jurisdiction over the dispute and decide it or it can certify the dispute to the NLRC for compulsory arbitration. So what is the legal effect of an assumption or certification order? Well, if the Secretary of Labor assumes jurisdiction over a labor dispute or certifies the dispute to the NLRC for compulsory arbitration, a strike or lockout, whether actual or intended, is automatically enjoined. Huh? Automatically enjoined. So that means that regardless of the validity of their claims, the union must put an end to its strike and the employer must put an end to the lockout. The strikers must return to work and the employer must readmit them even if they filed a motion for reconsideration questioning the validity of the assumption or certification order. Although the employer may not readmit union officers who knowingly participated in the illegal strike and the strikers who whether union officers or plain members who committed the illegal act during the strike. Assumption or certification orders issued by the Secretary of Labor automatically enjoin the strike. So what is the scope of the injunctive effect of an assumption or certification order? Well, assumption or certification orders enjoin only the actual or impending strike or lockout, not the imposition of sanctions against the strikers. Well, the case of PAL versus Secretary of Labor is illustrative. The union, in this case, filed a notice of strike. During the conciliation meeting, the NCMB informed the union that the issues raised in the notice of strike are non-strikeable. Nevertheless, the union proceeded to conduct a strike vote PAL was then constrained to file a petition for assumption of jurisdiction to avert the impending strike. But the Secretary of Labor failed to act on the petition. So the union was able to strike. Later, the Secretary of Labor issued an order assuming jurisdiction over the dispute which had already exploded into a full-blown strike. The assumption order directed the strikers to leave their pickets and return to work and further directed PAL to refrain from taking retaliatory action against them. So PAL assailed the order on the ground that the uh, Secretary of Labor has no authority to order PAL to refrain from taking retaliatory action against those responsible for the strike. The issue here is whether the Secretary of Labor can validly order PAL to refrain from taking retaliatory action against those responsible for the strike. Then the Supreme Court ruled that the Secretary of Labor cannot validly prohibit PAL from taking retaliatory action or disciplinary action against the strikers because of their illegal work stoppage. All that the Secretary of Labor may enjoin is the holding of a strike, but not their company's right to take action against erring union officers or strikers. Since the strike was illegal, PAL had the right to take disciplinary action against the union officers and union members who committed illegal acts. The law uses the phrase readmit all workers. Workers qualified for readmission are strikers who did not commit illegal acts during the strike and union officers who did not participate in the illegal strike. Strikers who committed illegal acts during the strike and union officers who participated in the illegal strike may not be readmitted. Now, the law also says readmit under the same terms and conditions. This contemplates physical reinstatement and not payroll reinstatement. Although payroll reinstatement may be resorted to when physical reinstatement is impracticable. In the case of Immaculate Conception, payroll reinstatement was allowed because physical reinstatement of the employees who occupied confidential position would be impracticable and would only serve to exacerbate the situation. 
in the case of USD versus NLRC, payroll reinstatement was allowed in lieu of physical reinstatement because the teachers could not be given back their academic assignment since the order of the Secretary of Labor for them to return to work was given in the middle of the semester, the academic year. Assumption or certification orders are immediately executory. This means that strikers must return to work even if they filed a motion for reconsideration. If strikers do not return to work, an illegal act is committed because Article 279 of the Labor Code prohibits the holding of a strike after the assumption of jurisdiction by the Secretary of Labor. And considering that an illegal act was committed, all strikers, whether union officers or plain members, may be declared to have lost their employment status.